Hello and welcome. This is the news on NCA International. I am Lami Ali. The headlines. Nigeria assures international community of her support towards achieving Agenda 2030 and other sustainable development goals. Federal government is reviewing imposed restriction of travel ban on Europe and other nations. Nigeria Governors Forum to participate in 26th Nigerian Economic Summit focusing on economic recovery and growth strategy amidst the COVID-19 crisis. Many thanks for joining us. President Muhammad Buhari says the international community can always count on the support of Nigeria in the collective quest towards achieving Agenda 2030 and other sustainable development goals. Already, he said, the services of National Youth Service Corps members, as well as the 17 SGG ambassadors, are being engaged to champion the implementation of goals at the grassroots. The president stated this as the virtual inaugural SDGs Moments event convened by United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres as part of the high-level week of the 75th UN General Assembly. State House correspondent Adam Sambu has details. The SDG moment brings together representatives of government and other critical stakeholders with a view to generating a renewed sense of urgency, ambition, accountability and transformative possibility as the world embarks on a decade of action towards delivering the SDGs. In his video message to the meeting, President Muhammad Buhari gives an update on SDG progress in the country, setting out Nigeria's vision for the next decade in fighting poverty, combating illicit financial flows, and ensuring economic recovery amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. In this decade of action, Nigeria will implement unique initiatives aimed at accelerating the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. Such initiatives include the realigned national statistical system to effectively track and monitor the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals on an annual basis. Similarly, our National Assembly has established committees on Sustainable Development Goals. The National Youth Service Scheme is also ensuring that Nigerian graduates actively participate in the Sustainable Development Goals implementation processes by serving as SDGs champions at the grassroots. Nigeria is also committed to mainstreaming the Sustainable Development Goals into our subsequent development plans. Taking pride in the good strides achieved in the SDG domestication processes, the president says a novel, homegrown, integrated, sustainable development goals model has been developed while a model private sector advisory group as well as an SDG donors forum have been set up to engage those that matter towards the attainment of the goals. However, the coronavirus pandemic has altered our socio-economic dynamics and threaten to derail our progress on achieving the sustainable development goals. To address this, we have rededicated efforts towards diversifying our economy, focusing on agriculture and the mining sectors. Going forward, we will invigorate the goal achievement process as a grassroots by engaging the services of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals Ambassadors we appointed to support our efforts at the national level. We will also encourage more subnational authorities to appoint and train Sustainable Development Goals champions. President Buhari, however, explains that with the challenges posed by observed policy incoherencies and trade-offs, Nigeria will pay greater attention to interlinkages and mainstream sustainability assessment in the annual cycle of the nation's policy planning as well as budgeting and reporting processes. 
with the event coming at the time of great uncertainty, participants believe that the SDGs can show the way forward to a strong recovery from COVID-19 and better future for all on a safe and healthy planet. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Professor Tijani Mohamed Bandi has no doubt made Nigeria proud following a successful and fulfilling tenure as the president of the 74th General Assembly of the United Nations. He became the president after serving as vice president of the Assembly, Assembly's 71st session as a veteran African diplomat. His top priorities for the session were poverty, eradication, quality education and inclusion. In this report, Adebola Brooklyn Sunday takes a look at the reign of Nigeria's Professor Bundy as the 74th President of the Assembly. As permanent representative, Nigeria's Professor Tijani Mohamed Bande worked with colleagues from all regions of the world in pursuit of common objectives. He served as chair of the Special Committee on Peacekeeping Operations, member of the Advisory Board of the United Nations Counterterrorism Center, and chair of the ECOWAS Group. Tijani Mohamed Bande. On the 4th of June 2019, the United Nations General Assembly elected Professor Tijani Mohamed Bande, president of its 74th session. Mr. Balkan Boskir, before handing over the mantle of leadership to his successor, Professor Bandi listed some of the giant strides accomplished by the session. The first high-level meeting of the 74th session of the Assembly focused on global health when we did not know that the session and the year 2020 would be defined by a pandemic. Announcing for development, tackling the peculiar challenges faced by small island government states, prioritizing the rights of the child, elimination of nuclear weapons, and ensuring that peacekeeping operations got needed funding. For the 75th Assembly, these are the wishes of Professor Tijani Bande. We must renew our commitment to its ideals and values. We must fashion more creative ways of better delivery for those we serve. Many vulnerable individuals and groups look upon us. We must not waver in our commitment to serve them. Can I please ask a big round of applause? To President Mohamed Bande. Taking over the assembly, Volkan Boske, who was full of excitement and praise for his predecessor, described him as a goal getter and achiever and promised to build on the legacy of Professor Bande with a responsibility to strengthen faith in multilateral cooperation, international institutions with the United Nations at the center as well as the revitalization of the work of the General Assembly and Security Council reform. As long as health conditions allow, I intend to continue physical meetings of the General Assembly, taking the necessary mitigation measures to protect the health and safety of delegates and UN staff. We must continue to respond to the immediate impact of the COVID-19 pandemic by strengthening our systems and supporting the development of equitable distribution of treatments and vaccines. Volkan Boske, a Turkish diplomat and politician, served as the Minister of European Union Affairs between 2014 and 2016. His tenure is expected to end by September 2021. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. And it was what many described as a rough takeoff since the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, announced September 19th for the conduct of the Edo governorship election from internal party wranglings, defections to violent attacks. But in all of these, INEC was at the center to ensure peace. Mie Ogidi reports on some of these efforts and INEC's preparedness. Edo State ancient in history, modern in outlook. Headquarters of culture and tradition are now the bay of political activities. Edo State has a date with destiny on the 19th of September 2020 to elect a leader while INEC and the police have a bet with the president over the conduct of Edo and Ondo governorship elections. This Excellency Mr. President who has reiterated his commitment to ensuring that the processes are free and fair and, and the environment is secure. And this is the beginning of the process to make sure that this country from now onward gets 
election that will be exemplary to the rest of the world. That was on the 8th of January 2020. So, this promise is a great task considering the political cloud. At a point, INEC was fed up with the situation. In order not to leave the situation to its own devices, the INEC boss made Benin City a temporary office. I went to Benin and spent three days and we visited important stakeholders, including His Royal Majesty the Oba of Benin. The Oba of Benin and the Abu Salami Abubakar led National Peace Committee intervened, and interventions that resulted in two orgs, orgs that serve as a renewal of hope for a peaceful conduct. Peals of smiles and laughter. Are there enough reasons for the security agencies to go to bed? Bearing in mind that police alone has deployed 31,000 personnel, more than 2.2 million voters, 18 local government areas, and above 20,000 staff, the INEC chair, a chronic optimist, displays his optimism while the political climate shows some silver lining. The daily COVID-19 figures in the country are no longer fattening, but INEC takes nothing for granted. No face mask, no voting, but there is need for clarification on this. The commission is not insisting on surgical face masks. The countdown to the election is no longer in weeks, but in hours. Mayor Ogedi, NT News. And to health matters now, the federal government is reviewing the imposed restriction of travel ban for Europe and other nations of the world, which was done to contain coronavirus pandemic. This was the outcome of the meeting between European Union ambassadors and the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. Usman Ali reports. As partners in development, Europe and Nigeria have been in deep concerns about restrictions of movements, among them which was as a result of the global health crisis of the coronavirus. And so meeting of this nature is to share views on safer decisions for the benefit of all. Our positions are not cast in stone. They are reviewable. We've taken on board some very useful uh, information and statistics today. And we will also, you know, uh, be reviewing on the access that we will give to uh, European carriers and other carriers, for that matter, coming into Nigeria. Everybody must show the certificate of PCR negative test and then pay, if you like, for another test on arrival at any time you like to confirm that they're not importing uh, COVID-19 into your country, which is actually the purpose. Uh, we want them to do business and continue doing business. Air France KLM has been in Nigeria since 1946, which is a huge, huge uh, point. There is no carrier that has that record into the country. The European Union on its part says it is not juxtaposed by the Nigeria stand. Merely what Europe has done is exactly the same that Nigeria has done, namely looking at very carefully uh, what essential groups of people uh, should uh, come in at time of crisis. Europe is Nigeria's largest partner in the aviation sector. In Abuja, Usman Aliu, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Air Force has distributed oxygen cylinders to two COVID-19 isolation centers in Abuja, adding to the list of centers which are already benefiting nationwide. Defense correspondent Naja Tijani has details. More than 140 cylinders of liquid oxygen, or LOX, produced by the Nigerian Air Force Liquid Oxygen Plant at the 103 Strike Group Yola were flown in by a Nigerian Air Force aircraft for onward distribution to the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital and the DSS Medical Center, Sukuru. This is uh, to enhance civil-military relations. And this is to let Nigerians know that wherever they are, the Air Force is ready. Let them just give us the empty cylinders and we'll take them, fill them and deliver back to them. Uh, on behalf of the beneficiaries, we sincerely want to appreciate the efforts of the Chief of Air Staff for this initiative. So we still have people out there that feel that this COVID-19 is a hoax. It's sincerely not a hoax. 
The Naflox plant has a capacity of 1,000 liters of liquid oxygen every eight hours, which is in excess of the NAF's requirements for its air operations and for use in its medical centers across the nation. The chief of the air staff says it is one of the many ways the Nigerian Air Force is supporting the federal government's fight against COVID-19. Naja Atutijani, NTA News. You're watching the news on NT International, reaching you from our studios in Abuja, Nigeria's capital city. We're taking a short break now. More stories when we return. Israel becomes the first country to begin a second national coronavirus lockdown as global cases exceed 30 million. Joyce Ometu has an update on the health crisis. It's been six months since the World Health Organization declared the coronavirus a pandemic. A Johns Hopkins University COVID-19 tracker reveals that more than 30 million cases have been registered worldwide. However, 22,168,049 infected persons have recovered. As at 6 p.m. Nigeria time, the global death toll stood at 952,223. Africa is still the least affected region so far, accounting for 1,390,091 of global cases. Unfortunately, 33,500 infected persons have died across the continent. While cases in Nigeria appear to be taking a downward turn in the last few weeks, the Center for Disease Control and CDC said Nigeria has so far recorded 56,735 cases, 1,093 deaths, and 48,092 patients discharged. Meanwhile, Israel has entered a second national coronavirus lockdown with residents facing at least three weeks of tough restrictions that will disrupt the Jewish holidays. The Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said the move was essential after hospitals raised the red flag following an increase in COVID-19 cases. In the Middle East, Iran has declared a coronavirus red alert as daily deaths and cases increase at an alarming rate. Latest figures released Friday by the Iranian Health Department show that the country recorded 3,049 new cases and 144 fatalities in 24 hours. In Europe, the United Kingdom's health minister, Matt Hancock, said coronavirus infections are accelerating across the country, with hospital admissions doubling every eight days. The minister said that a lockdown was a last resort, but the government will do whatever it takes to tackle the virus. And that's it from here. I am Joyce Ometu. And away from the pandemic, distributed statutory revenue of 531.83 billion naira received for the month of August was lower than the 543.788 billion naira received for the previous month by 11.958 billion naira. The Federation Accounts Allocation Committee FAC this Thursday shared to the three tiers of governments a total sum of 682.060 billion naira as federa federa federation allocation for the month of August 2020. The communique issued by the committee at the end of the meeting indicates that gross revenue available from the value added tax for August 2020 was 150.23 billion naira as against 132.619 billion naira distributed in the preceding month of July 2020, resulting in an increase of 17.611 billion naira balanced in the excess crude account as at 17 September 2020 stood at 72.409 million dollars. Now, 18 governors are to participate in the forthcoming 26th Nigerian Economic Summit, which focuses on subnationals as frontiers for economic recovery and growth strategy amidst the COVID-19 crisis. Abubakar Usman Akwanga reports that this was part of the communique issued at the end of the 17th Nigeria Governors Forum teleconference on COVID-19. The summit, which aims to bring together local and global policy makers, business leaders, development partners, and scholars, we hold via virtual conference, expected to produce blueprints for reviving the economy at subnational levels. 
The forum also inaugurated technical committee of the NGF NESG Economic Roundtable to coordinate and facilitate partnership based on Memorandum of Understanding, the Annual Performance Assessment for State's Fiscal Transparency, Accountability and Sustainability Program being coordinated by the Office of the Auditor General of the Federation will be completed this week. Updates were provided on the ongoing health-related interventions across states, including regional disease surveillance system enhancement to COVID-19 support fund, basic health care provision fund, and saving 1 million lives performance for results. The forum urges World Bank to fast track the review of the smart survey conducted by the National Bureau of Statistics and finalize baseline assessment to basic health care provision fund. The Nigerian Governors Forum also receives briefing from Chairman of NGF Subcommittee on COVID-19 and Vice Chairman of National Food Security on progress of engagement with the Center on delivery of timely and critical mandate. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News. And the federal government is set to ensure that a micro, small and medium enterprises negatively impacted by the global pandemic are not allowed to suffer more due to inability to meet up with its financial responsibilities. The Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investments, Ambassador Mariam Yelwaji Katagum, said about 1.7 million businesses will be captured by this 75 billion Naira federal government's MSME survival fund. Chimobi, Walton Naji, now reports. Committed to lifting over 100 million Nigerians out of poverty within 10 years, the Buhari administration, through the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, in its constant review of the National Industrial Revolution Plan, which expires by the end of the year. This and other issues led to the advocacy visit by the Ministry to the NTA to deepen partnership between the Ministry and the Authority in its quest to educate Nigerians in government policies geared towards sustainable development. We're in the process of putting together, and we're hopeful that before the end of this year it will be ready, an auto policy, because we'll be discussing with various uh, automobile manufacturers who are interested in coming to set up in Nigeria, and uh, they're just waiting for that auto policy to be in place so that they can come and set up here. With a mandate to foster national unity, cohesion, and peace, NTA's Director General, Malam Yaqub Ibn Muhammad, reiterated NTA's readiness to partner individuals and organizations working for the actualization of government dreams and policies. I think uh, the economic sustainability program is uh, key you know, to ensuring that uh, the, the effects of the pandemic are minimized. We in NTA will be quite willing to partner with uh, the ministry in ensuring the success of this very laudable uh, program. The minister noted that one of the things that will ensure sustainable economic growth for Nigeria is embedded in having an attitudinal change among Nigerians on the need to patronize Nigerian-made goods. In Abuja, Chimubi, Walter Naji, NTA News. Now, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, says it has activated all measures and plans to tackle cases of flooding across the country. Director General of the agency, Air Vice Marshal Muhammadu Muhammad, represented, stated this in a message at Niger and Sokoto states where COVID-19 palliatives were presented in the states. Ilyasu Ali Akobo reports. The government has continued the distribution of COVID-19 palliatives to vulnerable Nigerians. A team headed by the Director of Relief and Rehabilitation of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Dr. Onimode Bandele, presented the palliatives to Sokoto and Niger state governments. As palliative for distribution to vulnerable persons affected by the recent restriction of movement to curtail the spread of COVID-19 pandemic, the items delivered in Sokoto include 1,701.6 metric tons of maize. These food items are meant to cater for 80,405 households. Similarly, items were also delivered in Niger State, 
The breakdown shows that 1,490.36 metric tons of maize are to cater for 64,715 households in Niger State. They say highly honored to welcome you all to this important activities of the service of humanity. On behalf of the government of Sokoto State and the people of Sokoto State to receive these items that have been presented to us and to assure NEMA that government has put in place uh, measures for proper and equitable distribution of these items. Ilyasu Aliyaku, NTA News. Sports News Now. 12 year old Nigerian sets a new world freestyle record. Details with Buddy Adeleye. Three time Olympian Chika Chukumerije says Nigerian athletes must be given the needed support for them to deliver medals at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, which has been shifted to the summer of 2021. Chukumerije, who captained Nigeria to the London 2012 Olympics, believes a good support system and early preparation would be key to the country's bid to make a mark in Tokyo. I also know what it means to be supported, so I'm using this opportunity to also ask for support for the entire Nigeria Olympic team. Uh, London was not a nice experience. It was not nice to come back with no medals. 12-year-old Nigerian freestyle wonder kid Chinon Eche has smashed football freestyle record, setting another Guinness World Record. Eche 